Hey guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel, another quick video. Um, this one's going to have some really important bit of information for most of you you're going to have done it already. But there may be some information here you missed because I notice a lot of people miss things and there's a lot of people asking what you actually use to clean the EGR, whether it's on the comments to the videos or on Facebook or wherever. What do you use to clean it? So I'm going to go through in detail, step-by-step -step process, pretty much everything you need so you can prepare yourself to clean your EGR on your 1KD. Well, this is probably going to work on a lot of other cars. We'll give you some ideas anyway. So let's get a few of these things out of the way for a minute and we'll get to that. I just thought I'd put it all there in the picture. I think we're ready to go. So the first thing you need, right, it's a box. Because once you get the complaint, so we've got a video, in case anyone missed it, we've got a video called Full Detail EGR Clean. It's on a 1KD. It's basically me stripping it down. I can't even remember what's in the video. I made the video. I, you know, I put it up and there it is. And it's very popular. Probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular. And it's the sort of thing, that's our injector replacement videos we've got in the VIP group. They're like that. There's a number of them. I think there's about eight. I think I gave up at eight. I thought we've done Prados, we've done Hiluxes, we've done 120s, 150s, a number of times. All the most popular vehicles from different aspects, trying to include all the information and sometimes you miss some, that's why you watch more than one video. But look, I must have missed telling you what to clean, but I can tell you one thing for sure. We've got a playlist that's called, so we've got playlists. So if you just want to know about injectors or EGR or suspension or whatever subject, just have a browse in our playlist. At the moment, I think there's only about 15 or 20 subheadings. So you just go on our YouTube page, 4 Before Diesel, and look somewhere, it'll say playlists. Uh, have a look at that and you'll see one called EGR, EGR Cleaning Information. And in that playlist is 37 videos that I've selected from videos on the channel and put into that. That's so, that's going to be everything we've got on EGR. The oldest videos, the newest videos, everything. If you want maximum information, somewhere in at least one of those videos, I'm just about, I'm going to guarantee you that we've shown you all these cleaning products, whatever, so you could just if you wanted to, you could stop watching now and just go watch that, or you can watch the rest of this and then go check out that playlist, right? What do we want a box for? Well, once you get the components off, they're going to be anything from um, really, really dirty to not too dirty, right? Now, I've demonstrated in video, so I'm not demonstrating now. I'm showing you the parts, procedures. Let's just pretend for a minute this is an EGR pipe, right? Just pretend this can's an EGR pipe. If it's got a little bit of dry powder or a medium amount of dry powder or a lot of dry powder, either way, I'm gonna go, you know, and I'm gonna scrape and scrape and scrape like that and empty it into a box, right? And your screwdriver might get, then you can go like that, right? That's why the box is good. The box is gonna go in the bin when you're done. This is DIY style, right? You know, you're gonna, you know, do whatever, right? Whatever. Some people are gonna send the parts away, get them ultrasonically clean, whatever you want, right? Cost you hundreds. You can either do this yourself by the time you travel or wait for it to be picked up and dropped off. It's either your labor or you're paying someone a fee to clean that. That's not what this is here for. That's got another purpose. But the point is, first thing you're gonna do, scrape. So that's how we clean it first. We scrape, right? So once we're done with that, that's screwdriver we're done with. And all the crap's in the box. Then we take the box and we turf it, you know, environmentally into the landfill or whatever, right? You work that part out. You're at home doing this. I'm going to show you all the other bits and pieces and products we use and the order we use them in. Okay, so it doesn't have to be any specific brands or whatever the case may be. And these aren't necessarily going to be everything that's 100% right either, but step by step and some tools that can be handy and I'll tell you where to get them. And I'm not picking any sort of brands, it's just what it is. Now, one of the first things you want that's the best, particularly for 1KD, like I said, we specialize in those. This may work on other vehicles. See this brush here, right? These, this is a Daycor brush. You can see it says Daycor on it. If you can buy it on their website or not, check it out. It used to be in Bunnings for two bucks, right? Now, obviously they worked out they were too good. Well, they're not that good, so they do fall apart if you give it enough hammering. So I actually need another one. I had a few of these in stock. Every time I go to Bunnings, they're not there anymore. I actually know someone that works at Daycor. Pete, if you're watching, can you please send me about 10 of these? Right? What are they worth? If we if they were two bucks, they must be worth about ten cents. Anyway, whatever. And uh, but they have got them in Bunnings, and I think they worked out a way to extract more money out of you. And that is, is one. It's like a wooden handle. I think it's a real wooden handle, and it's I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but it's about seven bucks. Who cares anyway, right? So 
that's the brush you want. Why? Because these are quite stiff bristles. They're not super duper stiff, but it's the perfect size on a 1KD to get it. And it's normally rounded on the end. It's for cleaning glasses, right? I think, right? But bang, perfect for that. It's, it's a brush that goes all the way around and it had an end on it as well. And it worked really well. But there's a whole, you got to use the right stuff first. I'm just showing you one thing at a time. There's that. Now you can use a baked beans or soup can. It fits perfectly like that. But what's going to happen, right? You see this? See the, see the bristles? It's going to flick degrees on you every time you do it, right? That's why that's not such a good idea. So let's can the can, the baked beans can no good. You want the beetroot can, guys, healthy stuff, beetroot, because look what happens, look, in and out, clean. There's no edge to flick, whatever, and there's a bit of room in there, but you don't want a big ice cream container type thing because it's really big, you're gonna waste more fluids. You just want a little bit bigger than the brush, right? So you need a tin can because you're gonna eventually pull the degreaser straight into that, but step by step. We've used the screwdriver. Let's put that over there, right? So we're doing the box is over there, the screwdriver is over there. Next product is degreaser. Now this is the El Cheapo, I wouldn't pay more than two bucks a can, probably less. What do you, you wait till they got, what do they got? Uh, 10 bucks for 20 cans or 10 bucks, what is it? 14 bucks for about 12 cans, 16 bucks, whatever it is. You get them down to close to about a dollar, dollar fifty, that sort of thing, right? So grab a few of those, grab a box. We just buy boxes of 12 at a time. Yeah, there's other degreasers, but this is simple cheap it's easy to apply it's universal this is flammable so don't use it on your engine bays right this is what it's for what it does you once you've done your scraping you need another container or some paper or something to catch these products right so you need to dispose of them probably add it into your engine or your waste engine oil it's not going to be much fluid if you know what i mean um but you want to spray you can spray basically that degreaser onto what's left that you couldn't scrape out and it'll sort of soften it up and be and spray it on the brush a little bit, you know. Psh, you know, I'm not taking the lid off, you know what I mean. And get the brush. And if you hold that EJ elbow in a certain position, you can spray a little bit in there, you know, five seconds, psh, there'll be a bit of a pull in there, and you can get the brush in there and you're going, and I'm telling you, it dissolves, it softens up, and it cleans it all off except for the black stain that's left. And who cares about the black stain? It doesn't matter. So you can stop at that stage and put it back together if you're happy with that because that's gonna get rid of your main blockage airflow problem and clean the script. That, that won't work if you haven't scraped it first because it's thick. Let's say it's six, eight, 10 mil thick. This is just gonna brush over the top of it. So you need to scrape it with the screwdriver. Then the last couple of mil, this stuff, the degreaser here, right? You know, sort of like Kero type stuff, Kero, you know, whatever it is. Someone in the comments can tell you what it is, what's in there, I'm not even gonna look at it. Um, Smells all right, you know, not too bad, but that's going to sort of soften it up and this brush is going to finish it off. Now, that's good for the elbow. Now, when you get to the EJR valve itself sort of thing, you might need a bit more maneuverability. So you always save all your old toothbrushes, right? You can see this one's been used a little bit. It's a bit filthy or it's done something anyway. This one could be straight out of the mouth, not mine. I don't do pink or purple toothbrushes. The other thing you can use to scrape as well is a spoon. That's why I've just got that spoon there to remind me to tell you. A spoon, it's not the right spoon. You kind of want one that's got a long handle and a strong handle if you can. A long, so if you go shopping at Big W or Kmart or whatever and you look for one that's got a, or if you're out at your favourite restaurant and they've got some nice strong stem long spoons, you might want to just ask them if you can buy one of them for a couple of bucks, whatever, because that's what you want. And that can help scraping out that bit in the manifold there is mainly what that's used for. And it can work a little bit better than using the screwdriver, but the screwdriver does the job. Look, each do their own how they do it. I'm telling you what I do, you ask, and what I use, I'm giving you the detail option. That's how we roll. I'm gonna hurry up and get it finished now. So that stuff softens it up using those brushes. When you get to the EJ valve, you can't get that round brush all the way in and see, that's probably why all those bristles on the end are gone. You can see here's an old one that's been used plenty. It gets all scratched up around there in the back. The good news is you can actually use the back of this brush. It happens to be, I think it might be another crappy bloody decor one. I oh, know that's Merryware or whatever anyway. Here you go, Oats, there you go, Oats. Well, they're different brands even, but similar brushes. They probably copy each other, right? But look, see that? It's got hard bristles, guys. What you want, fill your brushes. You want firm bristles if you can get one, right? Bunnings, right, two bucks or whatever. That can get in there. That'll do the job. You don't have to get that one. You can use this one, but this will get in around the EJR valve. This is a general cleaning brush. You know, it's probably meant for doing dishes, but I'm telling you, it's good for scraping EJR's intakes if you want to clean your diesel intake. That's a good brush, what I'd recommend. An old used one. That's an inside used one that's pretty clean. It hasn't been used on EJR's, I don't think. So that one's a bit softer, so check them out. 
Toothbrush is good for the smaller holes, you know, again, a bit soft, but when you need to get into a smaller hole, bottom at the EJ valve, that goes in. You tip it up a little bit on an angle. I don't like to get any fluids anywhere near the vacuum side of the EJ valve, so I'll tip it not directly up because it'll run directly down on an angle, so anything that runs off is going to drip off, not going to the EJ valve. Spray a little bit into that hole and just... I don't know if I... Didn't I show you this already in another video? I'm sure I did. Anyway, hard toothbrushes for that. Not so good for your teeth, maybe. Um, there's your tin to put the brush in. We told you about the degreaser. You don't have to get Mototech brand. You can get that export brand or any other brand you like. You can spend as much as you like at the auto shop getting top brands if you like, but that works for a couple of bucks. Now, what's this for then? Like it says, throttle carburetor cleaner. This is the only thing you use on throttle bodies, right? It won't always get the staining off, but I don't care. It's kind of like thin as really is the best way I'd describe it. You can use that for the finishing touch. That'll work, but what works even better than that and don't use that cleaning map sensors, okay? Don't do that, okay? Read the can, what it says it's for. Have a good read. This stuff, right? So I've been using this for a couple of decades at least, actually longer than that, about three decades. I was using this when I was a teenager cleaning lawnmowers, motorbikes, whatever, and I've been stuck with it ever since. Sure, there's probably better products. Um, it says Australian made and owned, that's good. Uh, it used to be, I remember paying five, six, seven, eight bucks, 12. It's, a, it's about 14, 15 bucks or something like that. And Bunnings is the best value. Uh, you can get a bit ripped off on it in super cheap. But what you do with this is this is what you tip a little bit into the tin. You know, you only need you know, a small amount in the bottom, 100 mil. And you're literally just 100% straight undiluted. This is how I do it on the alloy, on the 1KDs. And then in and scrubbing. And I'm telling you, in no time, in a few minutes, you'll be looking at alloy. You have your pressure washer there. Bang, rinse it off, and you can have a look if you missed a bit. Bang, hit it again. It really gets the job done pretty easy. That's the product, guys. That's what we use to wash our engine bays. Obviously, watered down to at least one to three type thing using a you know pump-up spray rod El Cheapo from Bunnings. You know, those green aqua system ones, about eight bucks, six bucks, whatever. They usually last a few years before they deteriorate. Sun wrecks everything, you know. Um, that's the product, guys. That's what we use. You can spray that on your wheels, underbody. Um, this is more your engine bay because it's water-based, okay? But don't leave it on and don't let it soak. It'll eat in. It'll road away materials and stuff. Um, so they're the sort of things you need. What do you use to clean it? Guys, that's what you use. That I call this video, what do we bloody use to clean up these EGRs or something like that? And hopefully everybody sees it. Please press the like button, give it the thumbs up so that it goes around and we know we're giving you the right information. In the comments, whatever questions I asked you earlier, please, if you know where to get those round brushes, that one there, please. Um, and you can even put it what products you used. I don't care, each to their own, but this is what we use. It works, it's easy. Butter bing, I'm out of here. Please subscribe, turn the bell on if you haven't already. You're crazy, you're going to miss the next important bit of information. See you guys.